Good morning. After 30, 40, or even 50 years of unwrapping, of unraveling, I've come to the understanding that I'd like to couch in the guise of a question. Can it be this simple? And <laughs> I would respond to this question in the following manner. First, let's get this said and done. Yes, it is simple. The deeper you go, the more you untie, the more you sit with puzzles, Zen koans, you discover that within complicity, is the seed of simplicity, the seed that will grow, put down roots, sprouts will pop the surface of the soil, the plant will mature just as our spiritual process is from infancy to maturity and there comes a point when buds appear after the leaves, after the branches, buds appear and these buds hold the promise of the not only the fragrancy, the visual beauty of the flower to come, but the fruit that will form as the flower has served its purpose of attracting birds, bees, insects to pollination to propagate, to assure the survival. But there comes a point when that bud is beginning to stretch, to burst, and it seems like the process behind the time, the energy, the nutrition that went into nurturing this flower, it seems a thing of the past. As the flower bursts forth in all its beauty, when its fragrance is released unto the world. Such it is for spiritual seeking, the spiritual journey. All of a sudden, the flower will 
bloom. And all the difficulties, all the effort put into nurturing this until the flower bloom is quickly put behind us to be replaced by the simple beauty available to be enjoyed, to be savored. And at this point, the process indeed seems so simple. And it is this simplicity that I found has been nurtured by silence. And this must be what is meant by clarity. This gift of silence this reward, <laughs> if you will, of being in a state of constant silence. is equally simple as it turns out as waiting for the flower to bloom. I mentioned before that it is inevitable. I suggested that we relax into this inedibleness that is sure to follow just as planting the seed, watching it sprout, watching it mature, and awaiting its flowering. Relax into this process because it is indeed inevitable it will happen for all of us and when it does happen we can't help but notice the correctness of the timing I've always kind of chuckled when they talked about a pregnant lady and she's going past her term she's overdue or she has the baby prematurely. But what I know from observation is that the baby's always on time. The baby's on his or her time. Just as your flowering, which represents the opening to the world. No longer is it secret or hidden in the bud. It's now there for everyone to enjoy, to appreciate, to bask in the glory, to embrace the grace that observing a mature flower is sure to bring inevitable that it will bloom. And to carry this analogy further, our spiritual process can be seen as planting a seed, digging a hole, which is the questioning, which is the beginning of 
rigorous self-examination, turning within, digging the hole, preparing the ground for the seed, just as you prepare your self to plant the seed of inquiry. These, this planting process is questioning, examining. Some effort in the beginning is required. Some effort to taming emotions, taming thought, taming action, accepting your responsibility in the process, recognizing that although everything else in the world is beyond your control, it is here in the preparation of the ground to plant the seeds that is doable. You can do these things. You can start taming. You can start by observing. Start by watching. Start by seeking your witness, your silent witness, who will guide you in this process. This is a time when finding an external teacher is very, very helpful to most. I will not say at this point that you can do it without a teacher. I would just say that it was more difficult. I was 60 before I accepted, before a teacher came into my life. Previous to that point, I always accepted that no teacher today had been available. There were several people that I've mentioned who I heeded their words, but there was no direct connection until I was 60. And this connection served us both for about five years until I began to accept once again my personal responsibility in the process. And I must say, at all along, my teacher pointed and expressed almost to the day when the events that changed me would occur. And when I say changed me, <laughs> it's misleading because there is really no change. And it's finding in that state of no change, it's finding, rediscovering that what you've always known. The unity that is our heritage and birthright. It's natural to be anxious. It's natural to speed up, attempt to speed up the process. But what I see now in embracing this new concept of simplicity, not that it's new, but my understanding 
just as equanimity, just as silence is a state of being, so too is simplicity. It, it's so simple that it's almost silly. But the bottom line is that all things have their season. All things have their timing. The unraveling of the ego. Untying the bounds that emotions that are not tamed, anger, greed, jealousy, learning, accepting that work needs to be done. So, having just fully understood the beauty of embracing simplicity, simplicity is a mirror. Simplicity is, says, thus is so. So, equanimity, silence, simplicity, leads directly to peace. To be at ease with what is, is the simplest definition that I know of peace. So continue your step by Step. Relax into the inevitable. The inevitable is that you will come to a point where you can see. You will come to a point when your flower blooms. And just as a flower blooms, it's there for all to see and enjoy. So, too, will be your unfolding. There's no need to try to keep it a secret. There's no need, on the other hand, to shout from the mountaintops, I am free, look at me! Because here is the danger lurking, the last temptation, the danger of a spiritual ego, which will willingly replace the discarded, the abandoned ego that you carry before. Remember along the path that there's times of rest, safe haven. Meditation is this safe haven. Sit in the comfort, in the security of those beautiful stones that lend themselves, that contain a seat within themselves. Feel, get grounded, Take a breather. And relax in the security of knowing that it is simple. So,
So in the last few days, I've shared with you perhaps an unflowering that I've been experiencing. A flowering, I should say, not an unflower, a flowering of the soul. An unflowering that leads to understanding. An unflower what? An unflowering, a flowering that leads to peace, equanimity, and silence. What's that old saying? Relax and enjoy the roses. <laughs> I don't know how exactly how that goes, but that's my sentiment, sentiment exactly as I sit here at this moment. I can feel it in the shoulders. I can feel it in my spine. And more and more, I'm becoming aware of the old adage, the old precept, what will be, will be. I th to me, next to the simple statement, I am, this stringing together of words, what will be, will be, should offer solace, should offer comfort, an understanding of nature, simple observation of watching the world around you. Now people being the exception, people seem to be the only expression of life that have temporarily forgotten their story. They have to question who, what am I? And the simplicity is a simple statement. I am. There's no doubt here. This is clarity, and perhaps the elusiveness of clarity that's escaped me for so long that I've searched and pondered about is simply contained in repeating and remembering the statement I am. As I voice these words, I feel the gift of clarity. It's beginning to see, seem to me that clarity can be, that I can embrace clarity, that clarity can be a constant companion. It no longer has to remain elusive or elusive or momentary simply by voicing and the magic of words, the origin of these words are contained in the echo, the song of the universe. That all-inclusive sound 
that of own will lead to a state where you can maintain clarity, equanimity, peace, peacefulness. And next, next will be bliss. Glimpses of bliss, because I've always felt that maintaining this state of bliss took more than I have to offer. So this is where I'm going next. Just as I found through being the being of silence, through embracing silence, through determining first the difference between silent to be silent, the absence of noise, to being silence, a constant state, not something to be temporarily achieved. And in this process, recognizing silence for the gift that it really is, for the gifts it offers to us all. So now, bliss. Is it time for me to live in bliss? To be in a constant state of bliss? Is it possible to do, to be in this state and still do what's necessary to live our lives? To fully participate, to fully accept the responsibilities that are ours, that are inherent in our blessing of having this material, physical body. This is where I am at this moment. But I feel no push. I feel no urgency. I relax into the inevitable. And if it's inevitable that we can be in a state of bliss just as it, we are in a state of peace, a state of grace, my first answer that comes to mind is who knows? Is who knows? But I relax into the grace of acceptance that upon all things or to all things comes their season. It's a process. And as long as you do your part, as long as you can deal with those things that you're equipped to deal with, which all are about the expression of you, of your you-ness, of your unique journey.
So within the seeds of the first step we take is the flowering and then the fruit that nurtures and feeds only to wither and die. Another ending so that the wheel of continuity, the spiral of infinity, can yet play out another unique expression. This opportunity is ours and as we really look at our journey, our path, our steps, we start to see the simplicity of this process of living and dying, expression, renewal, continuity, the wheel of life keeps turning. So let's come back to where we began. I started with a question. Could it really be simple? And surprise, surprise, indeed, it's the simplest simplicity available to us within complexity lays the seed of simplicity its time will come and it arises from complexity it originates in its part of complexity just as the opposite is true complexity is part of simplicity the yin and the yang the binding of the simplicity